You shot the horse! Asshole! You screwed everything! Stop and take a picnic first. We can slice up your horse and pick my pal Junko's bones clean before the prey get picking. Stand up. Why? No future where I'm going. May as well just lay here. You're worth more to me where we're going. So let's get moving. <laughs> Good aim, are you? Gonna throw it at me? You like that, huh? How about we do a trade? Your gun for my blade. Give me the knife. You will come with me to pay your dues and honor the hand that you've been dealt. Well, that's funny. I have one card left. You can have it. You sure about that? Do you even know what kind of a man Loomweather is? I don't think honor comes into his vocabulary. That, and he can't even juggle. Loomweather shortcomings are of no concern to me at this time. Must distance you from your loved ones. Dirty job like this. Must be frustrating when it don't amount to much. And your lady goes hungry and horny. There's no alternative way to resolve this. You're coming with me. Since when does authority matter to a doomed clown? Don't be a fool. Respect my situation here. Well, you can see it. On the floor down there. You, my friend, got dealt a bad hand. No! God damn it! God damn it! You fucking asshole!
My name is Cain Farrell, a gun for hire. I'm wandering alone in the shortest space without friend or comrade. Nothing exists. All is a dream. But who is the dreamer? And how did he come to dream? All that comes to me is her. Her and the daily ones. Her and the daily ones. Look, he lives. So what the fuck happened to you? I don't remember. I don't like not remembering. Then let her work that voodoo on your system. So let's hear it about the fucker. Fuck up. I'm still here, aren't I? Sloppy, son. Very sloppy. How'd you get your goddamn horse killed? The assailant. He not have a horse. Clearly not. And not a word from anyone seen who rolled me in. Well, that's the big mystery. I don't know how you do it, Kane. But you did. You made it back with my man. Did Clayton Campbell see me ride in with anybody or not? Clayton Camel? <laughs> Clayton Camel is a degenerate. Alcoholic gambler. He woke up propped against the bar, as usual. Came outside, cleared his throat, took in lungfuls of fresh air, and saw you sunbathing with that heap of maggot feed. Beautiful. He killed himself, you know. The goddamn bounty. That's a shame. I had a right show planned for that perverted worm. He ended his own life rather than be dragged into your hands. Stop it! Stop it! You tease me with what could have been. Mustn't have been much fun dragging that pile of shit across the landscape. Maybe I should take that as a sign. Sign of what, boy? To take a longer and break. You ain't going nowhere. Well, I'm not until you hand over my goddamn wages. What is this talk here now? You been letting that little saint back home soften your melon. This should cover the horse. Ah, one step ahead of you there. And because I'm a generous soul, the new horse is on me. Don't make a habit of making crowbait. And don't get excited just yet, because I'm not finished with you. Figures. This here is McGonagall. McGonagall's a good man. We've done business a few times. And he couldn't wait to meet you. It's a pleasure, Mr. Farrowwood. I hope you can prove to be of some service to us in this time. To the men are born, this man. We got some serious business to discuss, boy. You feeling strong? I'm rested. Then we best see that you still have that unflinching charm that I've grown to entertain. You're gonna love this. Mighty pretty. Ain't she pretty? Wanna wave your dick in her, do ya? Wanna wave your filth in her, do ya? Do ya? What is this, little mother? Can it wait? You wanna ride him, do ya, boy? You wanna be a faggot? 
You want to ride with me, do you? Do you? Well, how about it? Just let me go. I'll disappear. You won't see me. You want to fudge tongue on him, boy. You want to give us our own private freak show? Give us our own private freak show, boy. Oh, I can make it worth your time. I'll make it worth your time. I can get money. You want to make it worth my time, do you? You want to fudge tongue on me? You want to make it worth my time? You want to make my day, do you, bitch? I own everything that belongs to you. Hell, I even own you. Business loon river. I'm not one of your goddamn goons. No. Hold it down. Kill himself with your blade, did he? Let that happen to you, did you? I was ambushed. Things were sloppy. Where were you, Kane? Uh, don't follow. In mind. Where were you in mind? Cause you certainly didn't seem to be there. We're gonna need some focus. Focusing now, are you? Well, what are you waiting for? You want to jack it off before it goes? You know there's a reason. You don't get many Marys around these parts. Goddamn hell is wrong with you. We must approach this venture with a matter of urgency. Now please, if you don't mind, can we move on? Heh. <laughs> you wanna stay one step ahead, boy, or you won't be working for me much longer. Hell! Anyone would think you boys had never seen a day of fun in your lives. Now, going on what my friend and associate, Mr. McGonagall, says, this Farrowood is colossal. And by colossal, do you mean early retirement? Depending on which way you look at it, you'd be right on both counts. Casket. It's a town just north of here. It was a big retrieval by the law's hand of over $20,000. Taken by force by a crew headed by Felix Brandt. The law had caught up with them for the theft of the town. Now when we're talking law, we're talking about the Sheriff of Casket, Bo Withers, four of his men. Now can you guess what happened next? <laughs> the law went and got shot up to ship too! <laughs> <laughs> it's one big bloody mess we got here. Uh. <sighs> and then, the whole town of Casket were to be shaken up by horrific sight. Hell, 
group from Casket McGonagall. Turn him yourself. The sheriff rode back in alone. His eyes were missing, and he couldn't quite communicate. Man, he must have been riddled with shock. Or worse. Quite frank with it, sight shocked me. So naturally, we rode out to see what we could find of the missing lawman and the money. We wanted to see where the sheriff's eyes were lay looking. This an old friend of yours or something? We found the lawman. With them, the bodies of the Felix Brandt gang. The money, no. But what I did find is why I've come to see you here today, Mr. Farrowwood. Pinned to the back of Felix Brandt was this photograph. A photograph of a man whose face I thought I'd never see again. Philip Traum was his name back then. The higher planes can only know what he goes by now. This Traum fella seems to be having some fun. A novel little gesture. On the back of the photograph was a note. Written on it, in blood, was a message. Fool's Rock, waiting. You sure he's still gonna be there? Knowing this man, he'll still be there. This is an invitation. And as a man who seeks many answers, I am happy to oblige. Sounds like a big deal to you. Even more so than the cash. I contacted Mr. Loomweather. He said he knew a man I came to meet you. I respect Loomweather's opinion and feel you are capable. The faster we act, the faster the money is retrieved by the right people. If you know what I mean. So you're saying the payment on this one is waiting with the man in question? I need to find this man, Mr. Farrowwood. I need to find him. And when we do, you'll have more than enough to take that long-needed break you warranted. And then some. Three ways, Farrowwood. Three ways. Whilst you both sit tight and I go gunning for a jumper. Not true. I'll be riding along with you. Bullshit. I'll work alone. Not anymore, you don't. We have to pass Casket to reach Fool's Rock. I say we go around Casket through the forest from land to get to Fool's. It wouldn't be a problem to pass through Casket, would it? Ah, but you see, Mr. Farrowwood, I am currently absent from Casket, where my services are more than needed. The reason we are sat here is because I am done with Casket. So, the superstar, what you want from him? I just want answers, Mr. Farrowwood. Don't fuck this up, Farrowwood. I can't let you do this again to me, Kane. I can't let you do this to us. Do you have any idea what it's like to feel like I've been left behind with no idea of where you are? You know how cautious I am. I know how close to death you were only moments ago. Surely that means something. Do you not understand how much money I'm going to make on this one? Then I can walk away. Do you understand? We can have what we want. I have all I want underneath this roof here with you. But we can move away from here. Away from town. Away from Harlequins. Just think about it. We can have what we've always wanted. Our own little farm. You can't hide from the weakness inside of you, giving in to temptations like that. You need to decide that what you want is the same as what I want for us as a family. I do want to do to finance the very foundations of this family. Temptation has nothing to do with it. Don't you dare put the nature of your work down on me. You know this isn't what I wanted either. You know that I pray for you every day. I pray that God will forgive you. I tell him that you're a good man and that you're an honest man, but I know that he works in mysterious ways. The way that you came to me, I don't want you to be taken away from me like that. But isn't our God a God of salvation, no matter the path? And his wrath can be unkind and damning, and I hope that he has a lot for you, Dad. Then the possibility remains the damn same. I could lead a good life on a farm and get struck down. I could be a fucking priest and get a bullet in the head. You see what I'm trying to say here? You curse in front of me? Your respect for me is deteriorating. I'm carrying your unborn child and I have not done wrong. But the day that I find you dead in the gutter with the other vermin of the earth, 
that's the day that my life will really be improved. How many damn times does a man have to say the same thing over and over again? Especially when he has already stated he's doing what he's doing for the love of his family. Shit. Life on the edge can be very brutal and unflinching, as you know very well, Mr. Farwood. The poor young girl was fearful for your life. I don't think she'd be ready for such a painful loss. Then maybe see this as a sign. The Lord himself knows that a second chance is a special and rare gift. Growing up on the ranges, shooting up tin cans, I built up what I found to be a fairly precise skill. Sure. He got me in bed with the farmer's daughter once in a while, but never really ended very well. So I took myself out on the road, found a travelling show. That's when I became exposed to the challenges of other sharpshooters. The man with something to prove. And then, when Loom Weber found me, that's when things started to get ugly. When the money started getting better, I guess the love for it just dwindled. Now the gun doesn't just make you a living, it is your life support. But if I didn't have a gun, no one would want to kill me. <laughs> Only now you can't throw the gun away, because you are the gun. I understand there's no going back, but a man ought to have the right to step out of it any time he can. <laughs> well, if you can win Loom Weather around to that way of thinking, I, I wish you all the best for your future. When we're even, we're done. We should hit Bull's Rock by the morning. I can sense him, you know, sat up there on the top of the rock, waiting. So what happened? Twenty years ago was such a long time. And I remember it like it was yesterday. It's gonna be a long night. You might as well tell. We were out fishing. That was I, Nicholas Baum, I'm the son of the local principal judge of the court, and Seppi Womer, whose father had a bar called Triplis. For instance, childhood and in the beginnings of manhood, we knew the hills as well as the birds, and went out to a favorite fishing spot and spent the better part of a day there. Soon there came a young man strolling through the trees and he sat down next to us and started talking to us as if he knew us. We did not say anything, for he was a stranger. We were not used to strangers and were shy of them. He had a pleasant face, a winning voice, handsome clothes on him. When he talked, he was confident, not shy and awkward and diffident. We wanted to be friendly with him, but didn't know how to begin. Then I thought of my pipe and wondered if it would be taken kindly as men if I offered it to him. 
then I thought I had no fire. I was upset and disappointed. But he said, fire? Oh, that is easy. I can furnish it. I was astonished, for I hadn't spoken a word. He took the pipe and blew on it. The tobacco glowed red and purple swirls flowed up through the air. We couldn't believe what we had seen and wanted to flee, but he persuaded us to stay. He meant us no harm and just wanted to be friends with us. So we stayed, and eventually our curiosity got the better of us. We asked him to perform other wonders, and when he went on coaxing in his soft, persuasive way, and he went to a puddle, and came back with some water and a leaf in the shape of a cup, and he blew on it, and threw it out, and it was a lump of ice the shape of the cup. It was incredible. He went on to say, you need not name the thing you wish, as long as I am with you, just wish and you will find never said so true. Bread, cake, sweets, nuts. Whatever one wanted, it was there. He ate nothing himself but sat and did one curious thing after another. He made birds out of clay and set them free. And they flew away singing. At last, I made it bold as to ask him who he was. An angel, he said simply, and set another bird free. A kind of awe fell upon us when he said that, and we were afraid again. But he told us not to be afraid, but why should we fear an angel? And anyway, he liked us. Seppi asked him his name, to which he simply said, Philip Traum. He let us make a population out of clay. He gave each one life as easily as he could take it away. Our lives changed drastically the day we met Philip Trump. An angel. Soon. I would be where my own eyes would see the source and the course to give me my own answers to the great mystery. So, if you're saying this guy's a bit of a trickster, how would you propose we catch him out? You're gonna have to trust me. He will remember me. Maybe it is useless stalking. What are you saying? If Traum really is here and is how I remember him, he probably knows we're right here, right now. He's probably got his eyes locked on the both of us, right as I speak. You're crazy. Just like Gloomweaver for giving you the nod. I guess there was more I should have told you about my encounter with Traum. Oh yeah. Shh. You hear him calling? McGonagall! You goddamn crazy. McGonagall! McGonagall!
This here rock is closed on Sundays. Trouble at ending up like you're a kin. Keep the upper limbs up, please, friend. We're gonna have to kill the game before it started now, do we? Ain't got any more surprises I for me, friend. You got a blade. Have you got a blade for me, friend? There's a knife in my book. Mighty honest. Wouldn't want to strip you now. Horse you rode on. Mighty fine. Could feed some folks for a good few nights out here. Nothing's happening to that horse. Why is that? Poor track record of responsibility. You planning on killing me here today? <laughs> well, that's one dusty, dry sense of humor you got locked up in that tight of yours, ain't it? It's the next natural step. So why don't you just hurry up and get it over with already? Well, you see, it gets lonely up in these hills. So, I got me somebody to talk with. If you get lonely, then you didn't have to kill my friend. Man only needs one person to talk with. Then why didn't you come back with me? Give yourself in. Get back where you're stolen. Make yourself some new friends. Hell, maybe you're right. You know, this has been one big terrible mistake. Hell, I've even been bored of my own company up here anyhow. Maybe I should just return to you the tool of your trade. Go on, take it. Maybe we can huddle up together on that horse. Right away. Sound good? Doesn't seem likely. You've hurt my feelings. It was me thinking we was going to be friends. What brings you up here, Slinger? Your soul. It's worth a lot of dough to me. <laughs> We're talking souls now. The man you killed didn't want you for the money. He wanted you specifically. Well now, that makes me feel special. Told me he met you a little over two decades ago. So he wanted a little reunion? He found a note. Brain and blood. Said you were waiting. He knew it was for him. Was it? It could have been for anyone. He knew your name! I have many. How about 
Philip Trom. <laughs> <laughs> I may have heard that name. He wanted you alive. Oh, I bet he did. Well, maybe I wanted him dead. Who knows? I've done this dance with many people. He seemed pretty serious about finding you. What did he want? Possibly the same as others from time. Answers. Hungry? I guess you're not prone to bearing yourself vulnerable before any man. Could say I'm a stranger to it. Does it hurt your pride? You don't have our instincts to survive. You think you're doing a good job of that? To talk with you, I quite like my hat. Sure thing. What? With the apples and the hat. Where'd you learn to do a thing like that? I didn't learn nothing. Comes natural to me, like many things. Ha! Huh. An illusionist. I haven't met many of those in my time. <laughs> I guess you could say I am, if it is a better understanding to you. Of course, the vast majority of people's lives ain't nothing but an illusion. What in the goddamn hell are you talking about? In your mind, what do you see your good lady wife doing right now? She's at home, praying for my soul and staying out of harm's reach. <laughs> you sure? You sure she ain't being a bad girl? <laughs> Wife. She a pious soul. She grew up in a convent. Left shortly after her postulancy. And why did she leave? Because we were in love. And you desecrated her purity with your seed, and she couldn't return. as much as mine. But surely, that contradicts the order of her responsibility. She's still close to God. And what would you say if God wasn't listening? She's not proud of what we did. She tasted the fruit. I do my all to protect her. Then why leave such innocence to collide with a world of violence? The harsh realities of life here is something that none of us can escape. Tell me. What does your good lady wife think of the dreadful sins you commit? People are hypocrites. We all sin.
drink. Here's to the rest of your days. Some sort of pathetic dog. Does it hurt? My focus. It ain't what it used to be. Sloppy, son. Very sloppy. What? I mean, you ride all the way out here. They fed you some horse shit about a pot of gold sitting on top of a rock. You got a lady watch that all the way back there, waiting for the wolves to come sniffing around? That's not how this is. You think maybe the fair maiden at home is the reason you're softening? What the hell are you talking about? I mean, you think she may be trying to cut off your balls? She's carrying my child. <laughs> <sighs> and I bet she gives you a hard time about putting food on the table, am I right? You know, you could always give her a slap. Make sure she knows who's boss. Hell, you never know. She may even like it. Well, it's good to see you do still have some fight left in you. Maybe you are a man after all. <laughs> the guy I rode him with. The fellow who took a dive? I've got to bury him. I can't leave him like this. Then go bury him. And then you're gonna show me the dough, and I'm riding out of here. Sure thing. I don't give a shit what you do. I'm leaving here without money. It's here waiting for you. Talk about my wife one more time, and I'll kill you. <laughs> sure thing, partner.
do you fascinate me? In a little while, you'll be 
excuse us, we're discussing important business. Who am I? Huh. <laughs> well... Who the fuck am I? What's my name? Kamel, you're doing it again. down like the dog that you are.
the sun, the moon, the wilderness of stars, a dream, all a dream, they have no existence, nothing exists, save empty space, and you, and you are not you, you have no body, no bones, no blood, you are but a thought, I myself have no existence, I am but a thought, creation of imagination has no awareness of its own freaks. In a moment you will realize this, and you will banish me from your visions, and I will disappear into the nothingness out of which you may have been. In a little while, you will be alone in shoreless space, left to wander its limitless solitudes without friend or company forever. For you will remain a thought, the only existent thought, and by your nature inextinguishable, indestructible. But I, your poor servant, have revealed you to yourself and set you free. Now dream of the dreams, and better!
Welcome, friend. You got a little lost? I've been waiting a long time for you. Here, your weapon. Pick it up! your name. Well, that's too bad. Good morning, I was talking to you, friend. Thank you, Lord. He's awake. In fire, brimstone, or jewels to soon. 